Well, hello everybody. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install a pop-up assembly or a drain assembly. Now, you can buy these separate, uh, but a lot of times they come when you buy the faucet and they typically match the color of the faucet. But like I said, you can buy these separately. Um, relatively easy to install. Uh, you're gonna need a few things to go along with this. Um, you're gonna need what they call a P-trap, and it's called a P-trap because of the way it's shaped, not because of what's in it. Um, you're gonna need a tailpiece extension. This is the compression variety. Uh, there's actually two of them. It comes double-ended. You're gonna cut this, uh, so you will have two pieces uh, left over. You can buy singles. It just doesn't have the other end, but we like to buy them like this. Uh, it's cheaper, it saves us a little bit of money, but we're going to use both of them. Um, you're going to need a pair of tongue and groove pliers. Plumbers like to brand name and call these channel locks, but proper name is tongue and groove pliers. Um, you will need some type of saw. This one's pretty big, but you will need some type of hand saw um, to cut your tailpiece assembly and your P-trap. Um, you're going to need some putty or some silicone. Now there's a big debate in the plumbing community about which is better. Um, if I was doing service stuff, I would probably go for the silicone. Um, it makes a really good seal, um, but it's kind of difficult to get apart. Now in new construction, uh, I might have to take this apart for some reason. The sink might be damaged or the countertop, something might be wrong with it, and we might have to come back and actually uninstall these pieces so that's where the putty comes in handy um, it's really easy to clean up uh, and in new construction I prefer the putty um, and that's about it so uh, we can get started alright so the first thing uh, these things pretty much are gonna come assembled like this for you now this particular one we call these a half and half because it's half metal and it's half plastic. Uh, there's some cheaper ones out there that are all plastic. Now you have to be careful with those because if you tighten it down too much you can break this top piece off or you can crack the nut and there are some out there that are full metal all the way down uh, and those are a uh, little more expensive uh, but you know you get what you pay for. So first thing you're gonna have to take this apart. Now be careful when taking this apart because there are some things like this little uh, beveled washer, this little grommet, that has to be in there with the bevel up um, so you don't have a leak. There's also inside uh, where your pop-up rod goes, there's some little uh, washers inside of here. Uh, so if you take this apart, be careful because if you lose these pieces, um, it's going to leak like crazy and it's hard to buy just those little washers so you'd have to buy a whole new pop-up assembly if you lose some of these parts um, but there's your stopper part um, this one has been installed a few times so it's got some thread sealant and stuff on it uh, somebody put a little bit of Teflon tape around it and now that's you are going to want to put some Teflon tape on that. And then you've got a big washer and uh, this big grommet here. Uh, and then that piece. Now, to get started, uh, you see all these little holes around here? That's for your overflow drain, the little, what we call a porcelator that's down here in the sink. Uh, so you don't want to stop that up. That needs to be free flowing, which is something a lot of installers mess up. They'll come over here, they'll grab their big jar of putty and they'll get them a great big old ball and they'll just wrap it around there and clog all those holes up and that can lead to some problems later. Uh, plus if you stop the holes up, overflow is not going to work for you. So what I do is I make a Play-Doh snake. Remember these from when you were a little kid? I used to do this all the time. And save your extra putty. There's nothing wrong with that as long as it don't have trash and wood chips and stuff in it. And then you're going to go around with your little Play-Doh snake just like that and I normally smash it down in there uh, but see how 
your holes are not obscured or uh, clogged with putty. You're just sealing right around the top here. That's all you're trying to do. And then you're going to drop that down in the hole. And now we get to go underneath. Now most of this part is going to be done from what they call under the bench. So you've got your tailpiece hanging down here. The next thing you're going to need is that rubber grommet. Now um, I don't really do this in the training center, but I would do this out in the field. Um, there's a lot of things here in the training center that it's just, it would make a mess because we install these faucets over and over again. and. Um, liquidy runny type stuff would just be gobbed up everywhere if we did it the way we do it in the field um, but I normally take this and when I put it on it goes with the the bevel up um, and you can hold the top part of this and then of course grab the bottom and push that all the way up on there but what I would do in the field is I would have some uh, thread sealant or plumbers call it pipe dope I would take some of that and wipe it around here and get it up on the bottom of the sink too because these porcelain things uh, they can get little pores and stuff in it and little blemishes and things and it might not seal perfectly with this grommet so I would put a little pipe dope around that before pushing it up on there but you get it on there and then you get your big metal flat washer and that goes up on there and you can kind of look at this thing to see if it's straight up and down um, and then you're going to put your metal nut on there. Now, sometimes this can be tricky and somebody did put some Teflon tape right around here so it's going to kind of give me a hard time. Normally this would just uh, fly up on there, it would just spin really easy and once I get part past this Teflon part it should just start spinning. Let's see. There it goes. They give you quite a good bit of threads here because they don't know the size or the thickness of the uh, basin you're dealing with or a vessel. Uh, and you want to get that on there pretty much hand tight and then get out your pliers and go ahead and crank this thing down. Now you're going to watch it. You're going to want that uh, rubber grommet to kind of mushroom out. You'll see it kind of squish. Uh, now I've been doing this for, for years so I kind of know by feel where that sweet spot is and that's about it right there. Now the guy before me did put some Teflon tape around here and I highly recommend doing that um, in the field but you really shouldn't have to. The thing is we just do so many of these things that we're just flying from this one to that one to this one to that one and you know doing the whole house at one time and any little thing that you can do to prevent you from having a little leak or something at the end of the day uh, you're gonna want to do those steps so some thread sealant some pipe dope or Teflon tape Teflon tape looks a lot cleaner um, you don't want to have gobs of stuff up under here I mean you're not gonna see it but if it's a brand new house you want it to be clean uh, just remember on this piece you do have that little grommet so uh, but if this is the only task you have for the day um, you're gonna be just fine just screwing this up on here like this now the thing is um, and I forgot <laughs> it's gonna go on there pretty tight but you're gonna want that face into the back and I've already tightened myself up pretty good so let's back off just a little bit to where we can spin that whole piece to where it's pointing right back where we want it. Now some of the ones that are solid metal all this is one piece there's a little threaded thing that that uh, the flange on top just kind of screws in and it's real small. Um, your little drain stopper here. You're going to want to go ahead and just reach over and drop that in. Now it does have 
um, some little grooves and sockets here. Now you can just let it sit on that arm like this, but a lot of plumbers like to go through one of these little holes. That way you can't just pull it out. You'd actually have to take this apart to get it out of there, um, which is the way I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to kind of drop it in there. And then I'm going to undo this. Now, you should have gotten this along with your uh, pop-up assembly. Uh, this is your horizontal lifting rod. Uh, this is a little bracket, adjustable bracket, that will hook on to the pop-up rod for your sink. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put this in here. You can get around here and look, or you can do it by feel and sound. And I know that that's in there. You can reach up there, pull on it make sure it's in the place and then um, um, these little nuts on the back they're finger tight uh, which is pretty neat some of them are is an actual metal nut back there um, and you are gonna have to use a pair of pliers on it but most of the newer ones are plastic down here at the bottom and this is just finger tight so just remember that if you've got a hair clog or something and you're trying to figure out, well, I can't get that little piece that, how does that stopper come out? The ones in my old house just came out and I can't get this out. You can get up under here, undo this, pull this horizontal rod out and pull that stopper out if you ever had to get in there and clean out like a hair clog or something. Um, let's go ahead at this point and put our P-trap assembly together. Uh, because I want to move my camera and show you what's going on back here. But we're going to go ahead and do our P-trap. Now, uh, on a new construction job, this pipe is just going to be poking out and it's going to have a cap glued to it. And you're going to have to take your saw and cut this off. Now be careful, there might be a little bit of water or some moisture that will drip out of there. Uh, but it shouldn't be a lot. Uh, and then you're going to glue this adapter, this threaded piece, onto that pipe. Now it's already been done here for me and um, I don't want to go cutting a whole bunch of pipes. So, uh, But if you're doing a remodel and it's an older house, you're probably going to have this threaded piece sit, sitting right there for you. Um, now most P-traps, the tail piece, the arm which goes into the wall, it's already got a little bevel. Some of the newer ones I've seen, you have to actually put a grommet on that. Um, but you're going to take that, take your little piece. Oh, doing it wrong. You got one that goes down like that, the threaded piece here. And then you're going to have one for the wall. And then you're going to have your little compression washer, this little beveled grommet. And it goes on there like so. And then you're going to put it in the wall. Now, um, I've cut these already because I didn't want to waste time fighting with that saw. Um, but this is a little bit longer, so when you're doing this, you might have to trim that up a little bit. Uh, and then the other thing, once you get that going, you can put, kind of just put your little P-trap up there because you're going to need that tailpiece extension. Now, you could rough this in just perfect within that range so that that hits, and you don't need the uh, extension. But that's kind of hard to do. Um, so we have our standards, which keeps us down a little bit lower, but requires this tailpiece. Now on this P-trap, there's a socket here. And you're going to want this to fit all the way down in that socket. Uh, it can just kind of float in there, but um, it's better if it goes all the way down because that ensures that uh, you'll have a better seal and it's less likely to leak. So you're going to want to put that up on there. Get out your extension, now it's going to be a lot longer, and kind of just eyeball where you want to cut this. And I'm going to cut it so it sits in that socket. Now I've got room to move up and down on this piece too. Um, but that's basically it. Now inside this thing you're going to have two different sized washers. One is for the outside of this extension and the other one is slightly smaller so that it goes on your pop-up assembly. And then we'll slide that up on there, give it a couple turns, 
and it should stay. Then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to put this uh, nut up on there, put our little grommet on there. Make sure the, the beveled, the more narrow side is pointed downward to fit in this socket. If you look at it, this, this has a bevel and that's beveled. I've seen people flip them around and put the big end, the fat end down in there and that doesn't work. It's going to leak. Um, but that should fit up in your socket. This should fit down here. Go ahead and get these guys spun on there hand tight. And then you can go ahead and tighten them on up. Now, another thing that I would do in the field that I wouldn't do in here, uh, I've got that uh, thread sealant, that pipe dope with me. I'd put just a little bit around these threads. Now, you don't have to, but like I said earlier, if you're doing four, five, six, seven, eight of these a day, that little bit of thread sealant can prevent a leak later on. And you might be running out of time. I mean, um, you know, we don't live in these houses. We want to go home, so we're not going to sit there and babysit it all night long. But that's the basics on how to do a P-trap. Uh, when you're done, one of the last things you're going to do is you look at it. You don't want it all twisted and looking weird and kicked off to one side. You want that to be as straight and clean as possible. Uh, most of your homeowners don't, they don't know plumbing. Uh, but they know straight and they know if it looks good. And that is a big percentage of what we do in new construction plumbing. It's got to function and it's got to look good. So uh, let's finish up with our pop-up rod. Here's our pop-up rod that's hanging down from our sink. Um, it goes through the hole. It's the one that matches the color of the sink. Um, you're gonna have this bracket with a little screw and a bunch of little holes in it. Now, sometimes this is plastic, sometimes it looks different. Um, <clears throat> depends on the brand, depends on where you get it from, but this is pretty much what you're gonna see. And then you're gonna have a little spring clip here. And basically, I normally put this in the down. That's That would be stopped and that would be open on the drain. So I would normally put it downward and then I'm gonna put this on here and what I want to do is I want I want it to have as much uh, movement as it can I don't want this rod all the way up on the back there where it's hitting and it's not able to move I want to keep that down as low so it's got a lot more travel um, and then you'll slide your little spring clip on find where your spot is it's gonna be different, and sometimes this is really tight and really hard to get in here and do. And then you're gonna tighten that little nut up. I normally point the nut backwards, so I'm not fighting with this bowl here. Uh, and this is where a smaller pair of pliers comes in handy, but you can do it just fine with your bigger pair. And you're just gonna get that tight. Uh, be careful, you don't wanna bend all this up or break anything, but and then work it a few times. Uh, you don't want to be all the way up here where it's like binding and grinding. You want to be right down there toward the end where it's good and smooth. Let's see how it works. Works pretty good. Now, um, a lot of times these little nuts back here will get loose and you're sitting there fighting with that pop-up, pulling on that rod, and nothing's happening. It's because it's just, a lot of times it's just sliding. That nut has come loose, or this has popped off the back. Um, it's a fairly simple mechanism. But there you go. Well, after you're done underneath, you're gonna wanna come back up top here and you'll see that you've squished some putty out. You're gonna wanna clean all that up. Don't leave that ring of putty down in there because this stuff can stay in the sink and don't set it on a granite countertop because there is some oils and stuff in this that can seep into the granite countertop and it'll leave a wet spot and you don't, you don't want that happening. 
Uh, but put the rest of it in your little jar, save it for next time. There's nothing wrong with it, you can use it again. As long as it doesn't have any wood chips or any big chunks of trash or anything in it. Uh, but then you're gonna wanna test. You're gonna wanna stop this thing up, fill this sink up with water all the way up to this little overflow. Let it run for a little bit down the overflow. Make sure it's not backing up and that you don't have your holes down there clogged. Uh, but you're gonna wanna let it fill all the way up and then do what we call drop the sink. You're gonna open that drain up, drop all that volume of water down through uh, your drain assembly and uh, once all that runs out you're gonna do it again and you're gonna want to drop the sink two or three times uh, while you're down here checking and looking for leaks. If you spend a couple extra minutes with this fixture while you're still here uh, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Uh, but yeah you're gonna want to feel around all those fittings Look real close, get a flashlight, blow on it, see if the water dances around, wipe it down with a rag. Uh, in new construction, you know, we're going to leave and go home. We're going to leave this sitting here. This isn't in our house, so we can't check it, you know, after dinner or something like that. Uh, and the last thing you want is a leak that you don't know about just going on when nobody's occupying that house and it gets down in your cabinet, destroys the bottom of the cabinet, or it can make its way out onto the floor, mess the floor up or um, go into the room behind the bathroom if there's a room back there and, and uh, saturate some carpet um, or uh, some hardwoods. Uh, you just you don't want anything like that to happen because it could cost you a whole lot of money in the long run when if you just spent an extra two or three minutes with the sink it wouldn't have happened. Well that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope you know how to install a pop-up assembly now and uh, good luck out there.